Hello, I'm Shalina Jan Mohammed, and I am the author of Story of Now, Let's Talk About the British Empire. If you had been a child who lived a hundred years ago, you would have been taught that the British Empire was so incredibly huge and it was spread so far around the earth that the sun never sets on the British Empire. What that meant was that it stretched so far around the world in different time zones that somewhere in the British Empire, it was always daytime. Around 100 years ago, the British Empire was at its biggest and most powerful. Now, a child living 100 years ago would have been part of a British Empire of 412 million people. That's nearly one quarter of the world's population at that time and around one quarter of the Earth's total land. That's a lot of people and a lot of places. If you think that the British Empire is far away history, you'll be surprised to know that it only came to an end in 1997, when the island of Hong Kong was transferred to China. I was alive before the British Empire ended, and I'm not even that old although some people say that maybe it's not even ended at all. All of this means that the British Empire was still going within many people's lifetimes and could include your teacher and your parents. How much do you know about the British Empire? Well, there's some questions in here. When did the British Empire start? So how old is Britain as a country then? When did it become an empire? And are you absolutely sure it's actually ended? The answers are not what you might expect. The story of the British Empire is complicated because it goes across so much geography and time. There were so many experiences and ideas about it that people have different views about it. Maybe it would be better to say the stories of the British Empire. But there are some big themes that keep repeating themselves. Make money have power, fight enemies and competitors, side with allies, safeguard self-interest, keep control, think you are superior to others and therefore should be in charge. And that's what we're going to explore. What happened in different places in different times, the themes that joined these different places and different times together, and how all of this has come together to shape the lives of so many people today in small and big ways. What we can all definitely agree on is that having the biggest empire ever is certainly something that goes down as important in human history. And so it's important to know the big things that happened. But what people disagree about is whether the things that the British Empire did were good, bad or a mixture. And what, if anything, we should do about it. Some people feel like the British Empire did a lot of good in the world by sharing Britain's language, literature, education, government systems, legal systems and railways. And cricket. The British Empire is probably why 105 countries around the world today play the game. They say that the British Empire improved the lives of people that were part of it, even if those people don't want to be in it. But the thing that they really want is for people to have a lot of pride in the history of being British because they believe that the British, what the British Empire did was really great and because it made Britain what it is today. On the other hand, people say we need to try and think differently about the impact of the British Empire and whether it should have taken over other people's countries and resources. For example, they say that the British wouldn't have liked to be part of another empire if there was such a thing as ancient Romans today, they might be very proud of the roads that they laid out in Britain, which we still drive on. But the Britons of the time probably didn't feel very happy that more than 10% of its population was killed fighting the Romans. Instead, it's very proud of Boudicca and other people who tried to reclaim the country's independence. It's the same when we think about the British Empire, because to be big, powerful and rich, the British Empire did some pretty horrible things, like slavery and massacres. And those are things that we definitely should not be proud of. 
Some people say that instead of pretending they didn't happen, we should be honest and try to fix bad things which happened today because of the bad things that were done during the empire. In fact, when grown-ups start discussing the British Empire, they often end up causing quite a big hullabaloo because they have such strong feelings about what has made us the country we are. That's because the story of the British Empire isn't just the story of one country long ago that wanted to rule over as many countries as possible. Inside it are the stories of real people, people like you and me, our families, our friends and neighbours, who just happen to live in places around the world affected by the British Empire. We might look different from each other, eat different foods, use different words and even have different ideas about what Britain is all about today. But something connects us. The British Empire. Let's explore these questions together. Are you ready?